I'm Sarah, and welcome to Rainy Day Crochet. So today I thought I'd talk about some of the projects that I've completed recently, or I'm working on, and then some future plans that I have for projects. So I'll start with projects that I completed recently. So the first one is this beanie. I made this for myself. As you can see, I have a yellow theme going on in my life right now. Um, this was a Daisy Farm Crafts pattern and I'll link it down below. I really like how it turned out. It has these little baubles right here um, and then I made a little kind of sad looking um, little puff ball to put on top but yeah it's really cozy. I won't put it on now because I'm wearing a bun so I don't think it would look very nice but um, yeah really like how it turned out. It's really cozy. Um, I've worn it out a few times now and it keeps my head nice and warm and it took me like maybe, I don't know, two hours to complete. So very simple pattern. Great if you know, you're just getting into crochet or you just want a quick weekend project. That's my beanie. And the next project um, I don't actually have with me because it was a gift for my coworkers. Um, I made little mug cozies and I'll put in a picture so you can see what it looks like. But um, I created this pattern kind of as I went, um, so I'll probably make a video on how to make it just because it's su uh, another super simple pattern and it took me probably 45 minutes to complete one. Um, so I made some for all of my coworkers and gave them away and I didn't make one for myself but I will in the future because it's super, super easy, super cute, and I didn't have any buttons um, to put on them, so I actually made mine button-less. I'll include a variation. That way, if you want to include a button and you want to fit it on multiple mugs, um, then maybe that's a better way to make it. But the one that I made, I just used one mug as my reference for sizing, um, so if you have bigger mugs, or taller mugs, or shorter mugs, it might not fit on all of them, so um, I'll include the variation as well. So those are the two projects that I've completed uh, recently, and then projects I'm currently working on. Um, I'm currently working on two blankets. They're both Daisy Farm Crafts patterns, so if you can see a trend, I really like their patterns. They provide them for free, but they also have PDFs that you can purchase. And all of the, their patterns are really easy to read um, and make so much sense. And then something that I also like is uh, they also include videos on how to actually complete the project. So if you're confused about one part, you know, you can reference back to their video that they created and then you can, you know, kind of figure out what's going wrong or how to fix what's going wrong. So I really like the pattern. So the first one is this one. This one is called the gingham um, window pane blanket. So that's what it looks like. And it uses half double crochets. So that's that one. And this one is also going to be a gift. Um, so the person <laughs> this is for uh, they've already seen it, so it's okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's another project that I've been working on, and this one takes some time to make some progress on. Um, and the yarn that I'm using for this one is Feels Like Butter. Uh, it's polyester, and the reason I'm using this yarn is because the person that it's going to is allergic to acrylic and wool. So I couldn't use typical yarn that I would use for other projects. Um, and this one I liked because it's super soft and I thought it would be perfect to make a blanket in and I was right. It is a very soft material and I think that the colors look really nice. Um, the person that it's going to really likes pink. So that's why I chose this color. Um, in the original pattern, they use blue and white and they actually, I inverted the colors so this part would be white, this part would be white in their pattern, and then this part would be blue. But I thought that might be a little overwhelming, 
um, to have that much pink in a blanket. So I inverted the colors. It, it is a gingham, and if you don't know about crocheting gingham, um, you carry your yarn with you. At least that's the easiest way to do it. So if you're using white yarn, you can see a little bit of the pink yarn poking through. I like it. I know some people kind of get annoyed by that um, because they want it to be just the color that they're working with and not the other color in the gingham pattern, but I like it. So just something to keep in mind um, if you decide to do any kind of gingham pattern. The next project that I'm working on, I mentioned two blankets, so this is another Daisy Farm Crafts blanket pattern. This one, I believe, is called their Boho Berry Stitch? I don't know. I'll, I'll link it down below so you can see for yourself. But this is what it looks like. So I chose... Actually, I didn't choose. <laughs> this is another gift for another person. So I'm working on two blankets that are gifts for other people. Um, yeah. This bit, this actually, kind of, one kind of funny thing. This beanie is the first thing that I've made just for myself. <laughs> I've made um, a sweater. I've made a, like an adult sweater. I've made a baby sweater. I've made baby overalls, which obviously aren't for me. They're for other people. Um, but I've, I've made a blanket, and then I'm working on these two blankets and other projects, you know, here and there that I've completed they've all gone to other people. Um, so in 2021, I actually want to focus on making more things for myself. <laughs> um, you know, maybe some more cardigans and sweaters because I really want more warm clothing. I like to be cozy, so there you go. <laughs> um, but anyway, this blanket is I believe the Boho Berry Stitch Blanket on Daisy Farm Crafts website um, and they also have a video for it and the person that is going to they chose a nice dark green I think it looks really nice um, so that's what it looks like it's just a repeating pattern so it was super simple to size up this is originally a baby blanket size but I wanted it to be kind of a throw size because you just need I forget if it's odd or even you know, I haven't looked at the pattern in a while because it's repeating, so you just do the same thing over and over. Um, but they they tell you in the pattern, you know, if you want to extend it, just do odd or even, I don't know which, <laughs> number of stitches. And then it's just five rows of moss stitch. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. Um, the moss stitch and then the berry stitch, which is super simple. You just yarn over, insert yarn over four times, and then pull through all the loops, and then you just keep going. Um, these rows, I will say, the berry rows are more time consuming. <laughs> I find that I get through the five, it's five rows before you do the berry stitch, and I find that I get through these super quickly, and then once I get to the berry stitch, it's it takes a long time to get through the <laughs> entire row. Um, so that's my progress so far, and I'll continue to work on this through the end of the year and then um, 2021, and hopefully I'll have that done soon. Um, so those are projects that I'm, I have started, I'm working on. You know, they are blankets, so they take a little while to get through. If you've ever crocheted um, a blanket, you know that it takes a little bit. <laughs> As for projects that I'm planning on completing in the future, um, I think today or tomorrow I will make some coasters. There are some really cute hexagon coasters uh, that I'm going to give to someone for Christmas, and I'm going to make those probably, I think, white and yellow, um, and then kind of put them all together in a stack, and I think it'll look really nice, so I'll be sure to share um, how I do that and the final product. And then the other projects that I have in mind, just looking ahead to next year. Um, I am planning on completing a temperature blanket. So if you don't know what a temperature blanket is, basically it's a blanket, obviously. Um, and you choose your colors for certain temperature ranges. Um, according to your area or however you want to do it. I know some people who um, maybe, you know, before 2020 um, traveled a lot, they chose to just pick the temperature wherever they were. 
Um, I'm choosing temperature at home. Most of the time I'm at home, so I'm choosing my temperature at home. So you choose different ranges and you choose the colors for the different ranges. And then each day or every two days or every week, however you want to do it, it's super flexible. <laughs> I'm probably going to do every two days and then I'll most likely um, do my catch-ups on Sundays um, just to make sure that I don't get too far behind. Um, so every two days or every day you take the average temperature, high, low, however you want. And let's say that it's, you know, 45 degrees one day. Um, you choose the color for 45, whatever range, if 45 degrees falls in, and you say, okay, let me stitch a row in that color. And you do that um, throughout the entire year, and at the end of the year, hopefully you have a very pretty blanket. Um, I'm lucky I live in Western Washington, so it doesn't get super cold and it doesn't get super hot, so I think my blanket will turn out really nice and I'll share my plans for that in a future video whenever my yarn arrives. Um, but yeah, super excited for that and I've never done a project like that, so it'll be new, but I think it'll be nice. And then some other things that I have in mind, like I mentioned, I want to create more clothing for myself, so more sweaters, um, cardigans, um, beanies galore, who knows. <laughs> and the other thing I want to do is I want to get back into knitting. So I started crocheting and knitting when I was about nine years old. Um, my mom taught me, and I think she taught herself. So I took a break for a long time. Um, I took a break from maybe middle school to middle of college and then realized, oh hey, you know, I remember how to use how to crochet and knit. I asked my mom to send me all my stuff and I picked it back up and I've loved it ever since and um, I've completed some great projects. If you want to see what projects I've completed, I have my Instagram listed down below and that's where I post all of my photos of my completed projects and in progress photos as well. I want to get back into knitting um, because I haven't picked it up uh, since I learned how to knit. So I actually asked my cousin who knits and she has her own hand-dyed yarn shop to send me some yarn um, that's a good weight for knitting projects. So she sent me this beautiful yarn. This is the Ash Blue colorway and her yarn company is Spectacular Yarns. And this is a fingering weight and I think the color is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I have I have two of them, so I just have to wind them up. I don't have a ball winder, so <laughs> I have to wind them by hand, and I've never done that, so that's actually kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to doing that. Maybe I won't be halfway through, but <laughs> for now I'm looking forward to that. And I really want to make um, some socks in, in this yarn color, but first I have to remember how to knit. <laughs> so I'm going to pick knitting back up next year and I'm really excited for that because I really like crochet but some of the fabric that you make with crochet can be really heavy and I like that knit kind of gives you that more lightweight material. So I'm looking forward to that. This is my favorite mug, but it's a, it's a sloth. <laughs> but um, it does tend to spill a lot because the arms that wrap around the mug are very round. <laughs> so sometimes my coffee will kind of drip over the sides there. Anyway, so yeah, those are some, some projects that I've completed recently projects I'm working on, and then my future plans for projects I want to complete in the coming weeks and in 2021. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!